everybody! I am so excited about this interview that you are about to watch with Dr. Edvige. She is a light body mentor and a spiritual advisor. And I wanted to pop in because during the interview, we were talking about the third eye. I've really been wanting to open and expand that third eye. And so Dr. Edvige said, hey, do you want to work on it now? And I said, sure. So I closed my eyes and she did all of this energetic stuff and started speaking in this like language from I don't know what planet. It was so cool. And I felt tingling. I felt energy. I felt energy at the crown. Uh, but what I did was I grabbed that piece of video and I put it at the end. So if you want to see it, because it lasted, I don't know how long, five or six minutes. So just in case you didn't want to sit there and watch me with my eyes closed to getting my third eye worked on, uh, and you just want to hear the interview, just at the end of, of it, you can watch it there and see how she works because she's fantastic. You are going to love this lady. So leave me some messages below because I want to hear what you think. All right. So enjoy. Everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I am your hostess, Marla Martinson, and I am so excited today because I have Dr. Edvidge with me. Do you know who she is? Well, you're going to because she had a lifelong dream to be a singer, which she accomplished at Madison Square Garden and in the 1998 Super Bowl. But her spiritual journey was equally ascendant, but in a very different and distinctive way from her singing career. It began at the age of 12, when she was often visited by what she refers to as benevolent beings of light. I can't wait to hear about these. Little did she know what was to come, because during that adventure, they took her flying among the stars, landing on a bridge, and diving to the depths of the ocean. So welcome, Dr. Edwidge. Hello, Marla. Thank you for having me on today. What a delight. <laughs> Already, love the energy. <laughs> So, okay, let's take us back to t age 12, because I'm always fascinated, and so are my viewers, and how people start on this journey. How do they start seeing and connecting with guides and angels and beings of light? Um, because a lot of us want to do that. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay, I grew up in South Jersey on five acres, right? Okay. And it was normal. My parents built that home, in fact, in Jersey. So it was normal at seven, eight years old, I could see ghosts. And so I would get up, go to the bathroom, and there'd be a lady standing in the hallway. I'd walk around her and go to the bathroom. Or I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I'd hear, look at this picture that's supposed to be of flowers, and it would be a man's face in the picture. And so I would describe him to my mom the next morning, and she'd say, oh, that's your great-great-grandfather. He must be in to visit you. So that I was accustomed to. But wait, I have right? to stop here, because if I would have seen a lady standing in the hall, wouldn't didn't you get scared, or like, who in the heck are you, or what's going, you just walked around her. Okay, so I must be bizarre. <laughs> You didn't think because someone broke no, in the house or anything? No, no, I didn't think anything of it. I guess I was just so used to the idea that there is more than meets the eye, you know, um, and my mom back then was a Rosicrucian. So we kids knew to be quiet because mom would go and meditate every day. And so we were just used to knowing that and having these open discussions, even at that age. So imagine now, fast forward to 12, right? And I'm in bed sleeping, and then all of a sudden I just feel this energy wanting to get my attention. So not like a ghost that just happens to be there and I walk around it and keep on minding my business. This energy was very intentional, very loving, yet very intentional. So I opened my eyes, and there at the foot of my bed was this tall being of light, right? Um, yeah, beautiful, tall, and long white robes, mm -hmm. um, almost transparent in his lack of color, right? I believe Octorans, because the angelic realm. Mm -hmm. Was and that before, an angel? Was, was that an yeah. angel? Okay. So, yes. Yeah. So before I knew it, I then was hovering above me sleeping. And so I'm looking at me sleeping and I'm like, well, how is that possible? I'm very aware of me, yet I see me sleeping, holding the pillow. 
and up I go, out the bedroom window I go flying, and out into the cosmos, literally up into the stars, flying in and out of the stars. I land on a bridge and dive into the depths of the ocean. He visited for six years. So for six years, I would leave my body, float down the hallway, go into my parents' bedroom, go out their window, and just have this experience with this beautiful being showing me that I was to become this bridge between those worlds, right? Um, that I came in with fourth dimensional consciousness already awake and able to see. And that I said, I will come in as long as I can have fun and see. And so that was the thing. Um, yeah. And that's when, how you, when you were seeing these ghosts, just to go back to when you saw the ghosts, were they like solid people or, or kind of transparent or... How, were they different from a regular person when you'd see a ghost? Wow. You know, when I see, um, it's almost as if I have on 3D glasses. Even, and I'll share an experience later on in the conversation, when I journeyed to Mount Shasta for the first time in 2014. I want to go wow. there. I want to go there. Wow, wait till you hear that experience. But it was like someone put on 3D glasses and I could see everything. And so for me, that's what it seems like. Um, almost like a projection but we're projections, so not as solid as us, but as form. The form was very much as outlined mm -hmm. like us. Um, yeah, that I would walk around it and not through it. Put it uh -huh. that way. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you because never tried to touch one? Real. Did you ever try to touch one? No, okay. No, <laughs> Ooh, no, no. <laughs> I have my boundaries. Right, right. That would be one. And so yeah. um, so this this angel, Does it, are you still connected with this angel? No, no. Um, although he has been in a couple of times. So when I was about 21, I was in California and it was the wee hours of the morning, sun's coming up. And all of a sudden I have this familiar feeling. I turn over, I open my eyes and there he is standing with what I perceive to look like a clipboard. Mm -hmm. And I said telepathically to him, what are you doing? And he said, checking your progress. Now at 21, I didn't have a clue what he was talking about, mm -hmm. okay? But I knew that I was on some sort of journey, right? And there was something behind me. And it wasn't until I moved to Nevada, you know, in Henderson, Nevada, pursuing music, singing, doing all of those things. And in 2004, I was in a car accident, rear-ended at over 100 miles an hour. Oh. Uh, um went into the light as I'm holding the steering wheel I go into the light and I'm sitting in this beautiful beautiful energy like a white and gold room and I'm like wow where am I my life didn't flash before my eyes I was just in this wonderful loving holding space and I'm like wow this is really cool where am I and a voice said you are here to bring them into the light and I thought okay and I guess upon the second impact on the car, because the car spun a few times and was broadsided, and that's what brought it to a stop. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'm back in the vehicle holding the steering wheel, and I'm like, well, what just happened? My mom was the passenger. Her seat had fallen back. I looked over to her, and I said, Mom, why is your seat back? And she's like, dear, we were just in an accident. And from that moment, wow, okay, now it really gets good. So that was 2004. Then all of a sudden, I started hearing, you know, that clarion call. There's something I'm supposed to be doing. And every day I would say to my husband, there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. And he'd say, don't worry, it's going to show up. It started to show up. I was visited by a being, literally walked into my room. And I'm like, okay, who are you? And she was Syrian. And she said, we are ready to teach you meditate. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> lo and behold, visitations more and more started. Um, one morning, and for me, back then, things would happen around 4.13 in the morning. That was my power number, my birthday. And so I remember waking up because this still point of bright white light was coming into my room. And it was blindingly bright, bright to the point of my eyes waking up to see it and I could see it with my eyes open and I could see it with my eyes closed and it stopped right in front of my face mm -hmm. turned into pictures and then went away and I said well what's that and I heard a voice say we're testing mm -hmm. about 10 days later and that was the frequency now of these visits about every 10 days 
10 days later, an ultraviolet light comes into the room. It stops in front of my face. It turns into what I perceive to be like a pineal gland because it looked like an eye. Mm -hmm. It had electrical circuitry all around it, and it started to do this in my face. Wow. And this is with your eyes open. You're sitting there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sitting there right in front of me about that close. I'm like, what the heck is that? And what are you doing? Right. And I could feel the intensity of it as it grew. And before I knew it, it did and opened up. And this is after you started meditating, right? Because they told you to meditate. And were they teaching you in your meditations? You were getting these downloads and stuff. All sorts of things started to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, from pulsing and vibrating, mm-hmm. right, to things turning on, to all of a sudden seeing colors every time I close my eyes, mm-hmm. to seeing a wormhole. I would see a wormhole when I closed my eyes. So mm-hmm. all sorts of things began to happen. Then I was taught that the first teacher was in, and the first teacher came in somewhere around 2006. Mm-hmm. He would ring a bell, and I was taught how to go to my safe place. I would go, and there he'd be, and he would send me out. And once that experience was done, I would come back to that place, and we would discuss it, and he'd share with me. So all these things began to happen, uh, leading up to, wow, these amazing basically six different dimensional beings started working with me and they would come in and surround me and plug things in. They would come in and beam in one by one and orbs and move in and move things around and uh, fascinating experiences to say the least. (laughs) Fascinating. Now, so the car crash, you weren't injured, you or your mother? I was. I actually tore two discs in my neck. So imagine... How amazing this is to be hit at over 100 miles an hour. Highway fatalities comes out because they're like, there's just no way they can, because we were hit by the police. Did I say we were hit by a police car? Oh my God. That's, you know, that's full gone metal and reinforced steel, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was parked by the way, because I saw them coming. They were doing a high speed chase. And so I parked on the shoulder to get out of their way. And one did not see me and rear ended us full on. Oh my gosh. Okay. So to have two discs torn and some bulging disc injuries, it could have been a lot worse. I had a concussion for a year. Yes. And so the path of healing myself was the path that also is a part of the process of awakening, getting on the alkaline water and pure foods and all sorts of things. And, you know, the messages started coming in and hearing inside voices and outside voices. So all sorts of things started to happen. And it was that shift in consciousness when I went into the light and said, yes, that. So it was the car crash. You went into the light and that was where you kind of made that. It seems like a lot. I have another uh, girlfriend, Linda Salvin, who's a world famous psychic and she's had three. Her. Do you know Linda? Yeah. And she's had three yeah. car cra- crashes, uh, well, airplane, two, crash. Well, airplane crash and then two car crashes. Yes. And that's what opened her up. And she went on a, she wasn't going to yes. be a psychic. And then that. I know the story. Her. Oh yes. Yes. Amazing. Yeah, we're very good she friends. Kept saying, no, no, no. And they're like, look, the sixth time I believe for her. And they're like, look, you're either going to come home or you're yeah. going to do the work that we sent you there to do. And she's like, okay, fine. I'll be a psychic. Yeah. And it hasn't <laughs> been an easy road for, for Linda being a psychic. You know, it's, it's a, you know, dealing with a lot of things and health things that she took on as a healer and everything too, but she is fantastic. Um, yeah. so, so, uh, okay. Wait, I had a question here now. Um, uh, now, oh, okay, this is, I got to talk about this since you brought it up, the diet. So I've been on this accelerated spiritual quest and uh, wanting to open that pineal gland. And sometimes I'll even sit with yes. it. I have this little magnet that I tape on my on my forehead. <laughs> and my husband says, what in the hell are you doing? You're, a, you know, and then I've got, you know, I'm a vegan. I juice every day. I do the supplements clearing, trying to clear out the, oh, took out the fluoride out of the toothpaste. To so you've to, done all those things, the chlorine, to, you've done the whole protocol, quite honestly. But I still shower, I, it's not in the, probably chlorine, my husband won't, isn't on board with getting a filter for that just yet. the filter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the filter. Um, mm-hmm. And then once in a while, um, I'll be like laying down with my eyes closed, sleep, uh, trying to sleep or something and something, I'll see something and I'll, and, and I'll, I know I'm like, I can, this is my pineal gland opening. I can see, and I try yes, to see yes, yes. and look, I'm yes. looking, looking, and then it closes. Yeah. You know what? You, it's, it's a crazy thing. You almost can't give it attention when it starts to open. You have to kind of like be nonchalant right, about right. it. Right. Cause as soon as you give it attention, it's like, I see you by. 
Um, I remember when I went into meditation, oh my gosh, when I first started meditating, all of a sudden there was the all-knowing, all-seeing eye looking at me. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> the coolest thing. So when you close your eyes and meditate, you almost cross them and look in that direction of your third eye, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and then I'm yeah. even doing little, you know, trying Tapping. to do this and then yeah. uh, putting some cream here that's supposed to help open it up. <laughs> It, it, you know, what can I say? Because for me, it just, it just you know, did. It, yeah, it, it, it is. It is. Okay. I woke up. Basically. I think most of us are from our diet and uh, the fluoride and stuff. It's, it's closed, I guess. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. Because it's, you know, that little, like a little nut down in the center of your head and it gets calcified. Yes, so you have calcified. to decalcify the body. And that's for your listeners why we're talking about diet. Right. You have to do those things to decalcify it. Um, just like your joints get you know, tight and stiff and you take the chondroitin and all the things to lubricate. It's the same thing with the pineal. So yeah, it's about some people you see that they're psychics and they're clearly like, you know, not healthy, very overweight or eating a bunch of junk or drinking. uh, And then it's open. Theirs is open somehow. So, so exactly. And so, you know, it opens when it opens, um, or you give intention to it and you do some mantras. Uh There are a couple of mantras and it eventually opens or you just, set the intention and go in and when you meditate you look up at that area and you um really just focus and it's part of some of the things that i can do when i work on someone um you know okay, you can hold facilitate, the energy facilitate. and facilitate opening it yeah it's beautiful because when i'm working on someone and we're working on the third eye mm-hmm. i will see like the wings of a butterfly fluttering and i'm like oh it's opening do you see the flutter <laughs> So um, I love that a question because some people uh, in the spiritual community will say, well, but be careful about opening that third eye because you see into, and then there was a guy on, on YouTube talking about that fourth dimension that where there's, there's demons and jinns and, and negativity and you might see reptilians or something like that. Um, you haven't had that experience. So, you know, interesting thing. Uh, yeah. Good question. Understanding that everything's about frequency and vibration, right? We know that the fourth dimension of the astral plane, that fourth dimension is where you go when you sleep. Every dimension has 12 levels, right? So the goal is to move past those lower levels of 4D to the higher levels of 4D and then beyond that. That is the goal. So yes, when you're first waking up and turning these things on, that light goes off above your head and everyone can see you. And when I say everyone can see you, I mean that. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent right? Okay. Everyone can see you. Okay. This is your test. And this is where you have to start to develop mm-hmm. your abilities to know when something good is coming in, to know when something not so good is coming in because everything is created by the divine. Mm-hmm. It's just, it has less light than something else. And so it's understanding that and to be able to discern and to say, are you of the light? And before you know it, as you're mastering this, because it is all about you becoming the master, then, and you do the work to raise your vibration, to raise your frequency, to expand your consciousness, and then you move past, past those lower levels and beyond all of those things. Okay, yeah, I had a year ago, a year and a half ago, I did have a low ne- a neg- low energy attachments, and I felt it come right through my crown chakra at night, mm-hmm. and it paralyzed mm-hmm. me. And uh, I couldn't, and I was freaking out. And I called for Archangel Michael and Jesus and said, mm-hmm. you know, get this thing out. And then uh, it, yeah, it did leave. Absolutely. But I know it was a heaviness. And you also, you know, and I share in my book, Ways of Grounding, Ways of Protecting. So you really have to inform yourself. This is not for the meek of heart, no. you know? And this realm is the illusion. And so that realm and all of these higher aspects of ourselves, this is who we truly are. And so the part of the work that people always say, I know everyone you interview, they say there's the spiritual work. Part of that work is to understand how to ground, how to protect yourself, how to raise your vibration and your frequency high enough that you become an untouchable and that you move past those things. And so it's all a part of the process of awakening. And so in this journey for me, it's been fascinating. And yes, I've been visited by all sorts of interesting things, to say the least. Um, 
And I would laugh after a while. But in the beginning, you're a little fearful. And so you do the work. Okay, how do I protect myself? Some say the 91st Psalm like nine times in a row, and it puts that armor around you. Some put crystals around themselves and grid themselves. So there's lots of ways that you can protect yourself until you have raised the, exactly. Black yeah. tourmaline. <laughs> yeah, have it all over. Exactly. So there are those things that you do. Um, and you know, I'm wearing all sorts of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, yeah, yeah. So that you create that shield around you and, and before you know it, you become an, an untouchable and that's the goal. Yeah. I can't wait to read your book. Uh, you're not crazy. You're awakening. I'm going to get that. That is, that sounds fabulous. So tell us just a little bit about that, what you have in there. So, you know, really cool. And it was so funny because I never intended to write a book. You know, I sang for a living, right? But this whole process, things change, don't they? And as I'm awakening, I found myself at a workshop down in Sedona. And a stranger walked up to me and said, are you writing yet? And I looked at that person and said, no, I don't write. (laughs) Sorry, right? And they said, oh, you will. I'm like, okay, what do you know? So I just ignored that message. Months later, I met an event in Vegas, um, a friend's event, and a stranger, another lady walks up to me and says, they want you to know that you are loved. Are you writing yet? And I said, well, thank them for the love. And no, I don't write. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And then months later, I'm on the phone with someone who channels Michael. Michael comes in and says, it is within your blueprint. You are to write. And I'm like, what am I writing about? And he said, you will know. And that's when these experiences started happening. Every 10 days, something would happen. And so I'm like, okay, you want me to journal these experiences and the process of what was happening through these paranormal experiences. I've been visited by blue reptilian beings, a race of beings dying, coming to get knowledge from me and what they did for three months with me. Uh, I mean, all sorts of things. Is this all in your book? The stories of this? Okay. I can't wait to read it. So it's filled with all sorts of beings because I've been visited by angelics, Mm -hmm. by dimensionals, by ETs, by ascended masters, Mm -hmm. you name it. I've seen them with my eyes open with my eyes closed, with them literally, oh my gosh, one of the profound experiences literally was this energy just coming in, touching me, because again, that was my agreement that I could see and feel them, right? So they came in and they touched me. I said, yes. And there I was with the Council of Twelve. Oh, okay. The Council of Twelve. I've heard of that Council of Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, as they oversee and all sorts of things going on right now. Um, So, yes, lots of beautiful visitations, um, being embraced in the middle of the night, opening my eyes in an orb, beautiful orb of all the different colors, violet and gold and this beautiful like a teal green leaving my room. Um, I'm like, oh, beautiful. The angelics coming in and hugging me, them sitting on my bed. So, yeah, I've seen it, um, felt them. That's beautiful. Well, it, we do get these messages from people because uh, probably in about 2006, my husband walked up to me uh, in the living room and he says, God told me to tell you to write. Yeah. And he didn't know that. And I had always wanted to be a writer since I was a little girl. He, I never shared that with him because he knew about I was an actress. I did TV commercials, this and that. Never talked about wanting to write. And uh, mm-hmm. he just came up to me and said that. And then I've written five books now. And, and uh, wow. so I Beautiful. just now I love to, to, to write. But it was interesting how he just. And then he says, you need to start writing. And then I did. I think like the next month I started in writing, you know. So Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it really is fascinating how that works. And so I sat and I wrote the book and um, it just has beautiful frequencies and energies in it as you read. And, you know, yeah. so, yeah, really cool. You can yeah. be attuned by reading the book. And so tell us about your Light Body Academy. What do you do? And what is that? Wow. OK, so all of these experiences, right, of opening my eyes and, and seeing things and all the visitations and the beings coming in and surrounding me led up to. 2012, September of 2012, as I lay there pulsing and vibrating as I did every single day, um, I mean really intensely, I looked up and all of the colors all of a sudden stopped and there was this still point of white light. And I watched as this still point of white light began to descend. Mm -hmm. And as it grew closer and closer and closer, it took on the form of a body. It was my 
white, my light body. And it literally moved into me. It was about a 10 hour process of it descending and of it moving into me. And I could feel it, my body moving. It was painful and very electrical. Like I was being electrocuted. I could not budge from my bed as it moved in. So imagine this movement and feeling it balancing chakras and doing was that kind of kundalini would you say kundalini or no or was that no no kundalini no that was before that yeah so before that the merkaba activated the kundalini activated yeah all those things that have to happen for you to get your light body had already happened yeah um so it moved in it was amazing um i literally stayed home probably for about four weeks not wanting to go anywhere because it took that long for this integration. Then I remember one day my husband said, oh, you haven't been out of the house in so long. Let's go to the movie. So we go out to the movies and I step on, you know, to the floor. I'm walking to the theater and all of a sudden there is a tunnel and there's this milky tunnel surrounding me. And I said to him, dear, do you see that? I'm walking through a tunnel. And he's like, no, I don't see it. But he does see stuff now. And he said, I guess it's too soon for you to be out, so do you need to go home? I said, yes, we need to go home. So we we did. Um, So from that moment, then they started sharing with me that I have the ability, the templates within me, the divine blueprints, in fact, for humanity, and that I can activate, well, I can clear, calibrate, bring in light codes, bring in fire letters. (gasps) Whoa, there we go. And activate your light body. So people contact me. (laughs) They're like, I'm supposed to reach out to you. And it will be very energetic. And before I know it, I'm bringing in their light bodies or clearing them and preparing them. And so that's what happens. The Light Body Academy is a part of that. It's moving you through the stages of consciousness. There are 10 stages of consciousness that you have to move through. It is sharing with you the seven initiations of ascension that one must master. You have to get through the fourth initiation um, to know that you will end reincarnation and that, yes, you are ascending in this lifetime to understand that there are cycles, like eight-year cycles, nine-year cycles. So all of these things I share in, in the academy, I have you know, audios that you receive every month. And there's three different levels. I have PDFs. I do a live webinar. And the webinars are really exciting because I talk about different things. One might be um, like this next Friday. It's all about the emotional body and how to master the emotional body, the 10 different types of, you know, emotional personalities and, and going through really hardcore details from taking you to Yes, I know there's something happening. Yes, I'm awakening. Yes, I might be feeling a little crazy. Yes, I'm hearing voices, inside voices, outside voices. I'm seeing things that I'm not used to or know what's going on. And I take you through all of that and um, help to awaken your light body within you. Wow, it sounds amazing. Now, when you're helping people, uh, you can do it. You do it distance, right? So, oh, absolutely, yeah. Just like because I'm a Reiki master, and everywhere. I, yeah, I know I'm a Reiki master, and I know that you know I send distance Reiki and things. But I have a, a friend who can't accept that and says, "You can't. That doesn't exist. You can't do it long distance." And people will question that you, that you could do distance, but. You can oh, yeah. Do- well, if I were to read some of the testimonials, you'd be blown away. Right. Um, yeah, quite honestly. And it because we are energy. And in yes. fact, you know, um, so my light body moved in in 2012. In 2014, I went to Mount Shasta and expanded even more. But all these things happening. So I see things pixelated. So I don't even see things solid anymore. There is movement, and I see the pixelation of everything. So... It's like I set my reference point every day to be here in this reality. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there we go. And as, (laughs) yes, as the energy is taking over. Yeah, so, wow. And there it is. (laughs) And then do you channel, do you do channeling too? Are you, like, do you any? I don't channel. What happens is I actually am in the embodiment of the cosmic mother, the peacock goddess. It's amazing. And so this energy just flows and does whatever it needs to do to work on somebody. And you see, it's, yeah. Beautiful. We, we're in. Yeah, she's in. Um, 
Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And pictures show up. I actually have video of me working on someone. And all of a sudden in this room, there's sacred geometry filling my room, white filling, light filling my room. You'll see a sphere. I'm sitting in the sphere of energy and I dematerialize right on video. So all sorts of interesting because we are energy and because my frequency has gotten so high that literally I dematerialize. I have bilocated and appeared to people during interviews um, right there in their office. And they're like, Dr. Ravid, hey. you, you're here. Yeah. You're on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool stuff. I've even teleported. Now that, to, that was, I have to admit, really awkward. I was driving and while I was driving, I could feel this energy, um, you know, because I can feel when I expand and I'm like, you know, just really expanded. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you got to stay focused. You're driving, you're driving. Yeah. The next thing I know, I blink, I open my eyes and I'm about five miles away, parked in front of my old home. And I'm like, well, how did I get here? And I teleported. So what's happening? Those who have gone through the wave and the levels of initiations of ascension and we are within our Godhead, now those amazing gifts are beginning to calibrate and we're beginning to get little tidbits of what's to come. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And um, so that so people can be in your Light Body Academy or can they just do one session with you? Well, you can go to my website, dradvige.com, and you'll see that I actually, you can book one session at a time. Okay. I have a mentoring program, so you can book 10, um, two packages. There's a package of 10 one-hour sessions and a package of 10 30-minute sessions mm -hmm. in addition to the academy and the webinar. So there are all different things that you can do to, you know, to see if I resonate with you and if you want to work with me. And so on. Well, I, I've interviewed so many psychics and healers and everything, but you seem like, I mean, you're really at another level. You have like this, ex, all this extra stuff that's happened and that's going on. It's just amazing. I love, it's so exciting. It really is. But it's the let us know that this is real. I have gone through the process right. truly of ascension. <gasps> Um, I have done ceremonies and lifted people up and they've seen themselves move through the eye of the needle. <gasps> um, open portals and different things happen. I'll share my experience with you from Mount Shasta. Oh, yes. I want and to that'll that. give you an idea of this energy because you feel energy. And so now I know you can feel this energy coming right to your heart. <gasps> ah. Okay, now I'll get to the Mount Shasta. Oh, Mount Shasta, that, yes. <laughs> yes, Mount Shasta. Yes, yes, yes. So, so amazing how this is and how spirit works, okay. you know, um, and how we're so divinely guided. So all of a sudden, I'm in one of those altered states, and my grandmother, who transitioned 20-some years ago at 89 years old, all of a sudden I see myself all dressed in white, and she walks up to me, and she's all dressed in white. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And she hands me this glass vessel like this, and there's this golden liquid in it, and she says, what's in it? And I'm like, okay, I've never heard of this stuff, but okay. So the vision is done. I get up, I go run and look it up, the spiritual meaning of it, and it says to be perfect, pure, and impenetrable. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Then the following day, I start to hear the word Mount Shasta, and it starts to ring in my head like a broken record. I'm like, okay, there's something else. There's something going on, right? And so I call a friend of mine who I know she goes there often um, doing sacred work, and I've done previous work with her. And so she says, if you you're not going to believe this. So hang up and FaceTime me so that you can see what I have to show you. And she picks up this box and literally she says, this box arrived yesterday from um, a Magi, somebody in, in Egypt that she works with. And she took out the box, a glass bottle with this golden elixir. She said, it's for you. And I'm like, and it was the same exact elixir that my grandmother told me. It was that name. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So three weeks later, I find myself on Mount Shasta with her and two other ladies. One, um, so they're helping me go through this journey because it's time for me to take this journey to that sacred space. So imagine, if you will, all of a sudden your consciousness expanding so much that 
you can see through everything and you can see as if you have on 3D glasses and you can see the life force energy flowing through every leaf of every tree of everything around you. And that's what it was like. So I stood there and she said, Avij, I know this is a lot for you to take in. You have two choices. We can take baby steps and make this journey or we can go back inside and you can forget it, right? I said, no, spirits brought me this far. I'm going to do it. We're just going to have to take our time because I kept expanding and leaving me. And so we would drive a little and then I could feel me expand. And I'm like, okay, let's get out of the vehicle. Let me stand on the land, ground myself. Right. And then we can ride because we have to get to our destination for what's about to happen. So she says, okay, so get out the vehicle the first time and literally it looks like Pandora's box. Something comes in from the side. I see it. It opens. And this wall comes in and splits the dimensions. One side is 3D. The other side is 5D. And I'm like, now imagine this because I'm seeing it with my eyes open. Right. Okay? I'm not <laughs> drugged. <laughs> You're not on ayahuasca. <laughs> I'm not on ayahuasca. No. I'm like, what the heck is going on? But I had done enough work. My consciousness had expanded. And so I'm like, whoa, alrighty, this is what I have to expect. And each level of 5D was really just these different hues and different colors. So we got back in the vehicle, we drove a little bit, and I was starting to feel this expansion again of leaving me, so we'd get out, and um, just absolutely profound. So one time, I am walking back and forth on the side of the road, and she has her hand on me, helping to ground me, right? And as I'm doing this, now I can't see her. That's the funny thing, because I'm in 5D, and mm-hmm. I, I can't see her, but I can hear her voice like she's miles away saying, Avish, come back. Uh Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I'm guided to say the Lord's prayer and Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So all of a sudden I'm saying it out loud as I'm walking back and forth and I'm just pulsing my heart like this and it grows faster and faster and faster and faster off my tongue. And I watch the Lord's prayer fly off my tongue, go into the heavens. Mm -hmm. Literally she captured this. Um, one of the ladies videotaping captured one by one the rays of God descend and hit me. And as each ray moved into me from my waist up would spin and come around and then I would be straight and then the next one would hit me and it would make me spin because everything comes in a wave. Uh Love, the energy, the vibration, it's on that undulating wave and it would make me spin. And the rays of God one by one moved in to me and it's to understand those principles of the race so okay i'm like okay what's next right because i'm like what the heck is going on so we get in the vehicle and we drive a little further and i get out and i walk over to the edge now this is the most profound thing i have to say i think i've I don't know, because I've seen some more things since then. This was 2014, and I've seen a lot since. Okay, so to this point, this was amazing. So I stand now at the edge of the forest, and there appears the Emerald City. I kid you not, I'm not drugged. And there is the Emerald City. I'm like, this is the kingdom where the Ascended Masters live in Mount Shasta. Mm. And a beautiful circular golden path appeared. I'm like... Whoa, what am I looking at? Mm -hmm. It's profound. And she said, Edvige, come back. You don't know your way. Come back. She said, no one gets to see the kingdom. She says, Edvige, you're so special. Mm -hmm. (sighs) And when I got back into the vehicle, my left hand started to have this violet you mm-hmm. and she's like oh my gosh the violet flame is oh, ready the violet flame yeah so she hands me the glass vessel with the oil mm-hmm. and i anoint my three eyes mm-hmm. right because we have our 3d third eye mm-hmm. our cosmic third eye and our dimensional 
third eye. So I literally anoint these to make them perfect, pure, and impenetrable. Yeah. I get out the vehicle, and there is the violet flame hovering above my head as it moved in. Is that the, oh, is that the violet St. Germain's violet flame? The same. Yes, yes it is. It's yes. the same. Yes. I am my beloved I am present, invoking the full power of the violet flame to transmute cause, core, effect, record, and memory, every thought, feeling, word, or action. Oh, yeah. So now we finish with the ceremony, right? The violet flame has done its thing. I'm expanded. That, by the way, remember now, my light body moved in in 2012. This is 2014. My I am now has begun the dissension into me. This is the ascension, folks. Mm -hmm. This is what it's like. And so now I come down off the mountain, right? We're driving. Two of the ladies get out of the vehicle. I'm sitting in the back seat with one of the ladies. And I can move at will in and out of 5D and 3D. And I'm sitting there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And I'm seeing everything like those 3D glasses popping out right in mm -hmm. front of me. The next thing I know, there's this big golden orb it's about that big the size of like a softball and it's beautiful and gold and it begins to roll up my spine and I'm like well what on earth is this and I see it rolling up my spine and it stops at my neck and rolls back down it does this about five or six times mm -hmm. and each time it gets stuck at my neck and all of a sudden my neck's in excruciating pain and one of the ladies, the one sitting next to me, she says, Advish, what's wrong? I said, there's this golden ball. I mean, talk about naive, right? Yeah. I'm like, there's this golden ball. It's trying to roll up my spine. She's like, what the heck? She's like, I've never been able to see before, but I can see it. She said, it's trying to get past your neck. Well, of course, remember the injury from the car accident and the disc and everything messing up my neck. Mm -hmm. So she said, relax your shoulders and it will be okay. So I relax my shoulders and I'm like, okay and up it rolls and it rolls past my neck i'm like i smile and i'm like there you go and it comes up now it's up my head and as it flings out of my crown it does this and there's this big beautiful golden starburst of light the final golden <gasps> light body and all that i was to receive just sparked it was amazing Beautiful. Absolutely. And beautiful. now do you still see the, uh, I think I read that you still see light through your hands or when you're healing you, you've got oh, it. Yeah. All sorts of things happen. Beings come in, mm -hmm. um, light comes off of me, heat comes off of me. Um, and I don't even, you know, I don't have to touch you. We can just connect. Or if I'm around you, I can move it and just, <gasps> Woo, send it. Yeah, it's it's quite something. So a question. So since you worked on my third eye, I was sitting here listening to you. I have feeling some the energy still. And I had uh, feeling some little like pinpricks. Mm -hmm. And lately for, gosh, I think the last six months at least, I've often been feeling pinpricks around right here, the throat chakra, pinpricks. Do you have any idea what that could yeah. be? I've been just clearing, cl clearing, 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 clearing the voice. <gasps> Whoa. And turning things on, right? Because there has to be, um, well, yeah, stuff that has to get turned on. So your team's already working with you, and I was just able to clear and calibrate <gasps> confirmation. That's the other thing. I will, my body will do that every time there's a confirmation. So, yeah. Um, so what it is is my team kind of upgrading me and working on yes. that area with the, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, because, well, the reality of it is you do a show right? You do a show. So the word that you speak is the will. And so it's to be mindful that you are actually going to have light frequency vibration coming out as you speak. And they're working on calibrating that. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> and my healer, my teacher, uh, Tahit, goddess Tahita from the Imagine Center, she, I went for a session with her and she said that I'm upgrading because I'm a healer. She says my, he, I'm being upgraded 
in yes. my healing and there'll be mm -hmm. new modalities that I'm shown and everything. So. Oh yeah. And that's the wonderful thing about it. You get what you get at that moment. Mm -hmm. Then you expand, work with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the mission expands, your job expands. Heaven knows. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Um, <laughs> and your abilities and more of your gifts turn on. Mm -hmm. Um, it's beautiful. I remember the first time Gosh, back in 2012, they said lay hands on somebody. I was actually out teaching a class, and they said lay hands on them, and I said no, <laughs> right? And the voice said it again, lay hands on them, and I'm like, oh gosh, no. And the voice said it a third time. I'm like, okay, look, I'm being guided that I'm supposed to lay hands on you. I don't know what that means, mm -hmm. um, but no one leave if you're interested, and I'll do that. So I just put my hands above their heads. Okay. Oh my gosh, something unique happened to each person. Um, one's power animal came in and plucked something off their crown. One had a heart wall and my whole body started to shake and I could feel that they had a heart wall. And I'm like, oh, that's what a heart wall feels like. And it shattered. All sorts of things happened. Um, so yeah, these are gifts, you know, as we get used to the idea of who we are, these divine beings really remembering our divinity and our abilities that we're here to help to expand the whole. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Amazing things happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling still the little pinpricks in here. You will. It too, Absolutely. So, cool. so I love yeah. it. You guys, it's real. Her energy is real. <laughs> and she real. works with yeah. you. So it's it great. It really truly is. Yeah. Yeah, so um, after we hang up, I'm going to go get your, your book, You're Not Crazy, You're Awakening, because it, sound, it sounds just, uh, kind of sounds like me, you know, you're not, some of the things that I've been through the last couple of years, it's like, well, my, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, my husband thinks, are you crazy? I'm like, no, it's really, no. You know. I mean, when you hear inside voice and outside voice, you know, it's so funny, and I'll share some of those, because it's just hilarious to me. I remember once I was driving, I used to own a, an Alpine Water Wellness Center, okay. and as I was um stopped at a store to pick up supplies so now i'm at a red light getting ready to turn left to go to my store and i hear an outside voice say turn right go home and i'm like well why i'm in a lane to turn left i'm gonna go home you know i'm gonna go to my store and the voice says turn right go home and i'm like but i'm in the left lane and this outside voice said we're holding up the traffic turn right go home <laughs> okay right yeah. so there's no traffic. They're holding it up. I turn right. I go home. I pull into my garage. I take out the things that I bought for the home. I come back into my vehicle and it wouldn't start. I broke down in the convenience of my garage. I'm like, thank you. Oh, yeah. thank you. You see, another time as I was parking at my store, I got a flat tire and I let that flat tire annoy me. This was around 2011 and before my light body. So understanding the process of what you have to go through and all this is in the book. So I was agitated, although my husband came, changed the tire. He went out of town and I was home alone attempting to sleep because at that point I had already started just pulsing and vibrating all night and not sleeping much. Mm -hmm. So back then I would sleep four hours a night. Now I sleep less because I literally hibernate and hover and travel all night working on people and stuff. Anyway, so um, <laughs> I'm awakened by a voice that said, disconnect from an uneven temper. Mm. And I'm like, well, who just said that? And it was an outside voice and it was calm and loving. It said, disconnect from an uneven temper. And I said, oh, the way I behaved earlier today. I see. And the voice said, nothing is to take you outside the space of your heart. Mm. You see, so we have to become detached observers. We have to understand those principles behind the rays of God. We have to be the observer, be in that space of our heart. Let nothing take us from that space. Mm -hmm. And in that, as the observer, that everything is how it's supposed to be. Everything is working out for our best and highest good. And it will, right? then we become a vibrational match to our light bodies and all that awaits us. That is a great point because with everybody, uh, road rage and people getting upset about different 
things going on in the world and uh, yeah. watching a lot of, of I noticed that, um, you know, my husband and I like to watch certain TV shows, the Showtime, HBO, this and that, but there's certain ones that, because we watch them in bed at night, and there's, and I just like put on my mask and I say, I'm not going to watch this show because some of them are so violent. And it seems like yeah. so many of them are violent. So I don't want to see people's heads being cut off with a sword and stabbed and, and all that. I said, I just can't, it's, it, as you get more, it, um, Attuned to the higher vibrations and, and yes, frequencies, you're so you sensitive, really tap right? away from that because you become sensitive and you understand that it matters what you allow in. It matters, and, right? Yeah. Especially at night when you know you're going into right those layers of the yeah. fourth dimension and you want to get past those layers. So you don't want the last thing that you bring into your subconscious to be negative mm -hmm. because that's then what's in your subconscious. So as you're looking at those things, cancel, clear those thoughts. And before you go to sleep, you're moving into beta, you're moving into alpha, you're, you're moving into different brain waves. And so it's really important that you clear the energy before you lay down and go to sleep and ask your team to show you what it is you still need to clear or to bring in higher vibrational energy so that you can do your divine work in that sleep awake state and then move into that so we don't want to live on default anymore we want to set clear intentions and so as you go to sleep at night setting clear intentions that what will be going on in that altered state so that you're doing your work, so that you're clearing, so that you're able to release more, so that you're able to impact the world in a positive way. And then as you're waking up in the morning and you're moving into alpha brainwave, right? All of life now comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. Ah, and feel that energy, right? And starting to send those signals, those things down into your subconscious so that you can begin to reprogram all of those old programs of limiting, of limitation, of lack, of fear, of all that stuff. Because everything that we observe during the day goes into our subconscious as a program. And we must be able to clear those seeds all the time. Yes, great point, great point. You uh, and um, I also note it hasn't been happening lately, but for a while I was be all of a sudden I'm laying in bed before I fall asleep, and all of a sudden I'm hov I feel my body hovering ab above myself, and I can feel my yep. legs kind of going up, like I feel yes, like I'm yes, floating. Yes. And then I have managed to really go out in the cosmos uh, once. Uh, fly around and I wrote about it in my book the Buddha made me do it and then once I met my dad on the astral plane he was at the edge of my bed I, I saw him coming out of the corner of the room all of a sudden and I I knew it was him I I, I said dad it's dad it's dad and I looked yeah. and then he was at the edge of my bed and I figured out later oh I was on the I met him on the astral plane Absolutely. but that yeah. feeling of, of like floating and then I tell myself it's okay go go, go. and then I just it's fall back fun. in most yes. of the time I fall back in I can't I tr just like with the third because eye because you open. have to relax you have to just go, go with, with it, it yeah. and relax and any resistance any doubt brings you right back yeah, yeah it's yeah. just but it's, it's a trip so amazing. like whoa I'm I floating. love it yes yeah, yes yes really yes cool. <laughs> it's good stuff it's good stuff <laughs> Edvige, thank you so much for stopping by Cosmic oh, Conversations. Look. This has just been fascinating. And uh, all you guys, all of her links are below her book and uh, how to get a hold of her. And I will keep you posted with my third eye. Yay! <laughs> Woo! So ah, thank you, Marla. Thank you. Abundant blessings to you. Thank you. There we go. And let's work on your third eye since... Oh, yeah, yeah let's do it right on, right on here, on the interview. Why not? <laughs> yeah, and then we'll, I'll report back. This is what I okay. see. Okay. Do I have your permission? Yes. All right, so let's just focus and take a nice long breath in. And out. In. Ah, and once more in and out. And I'm going to move right to your third eye. Why me to shine of shoe asa, me kushin akutu yasa, maturo pukushin akata, ino yasa. Whoa, and we're bringing up that resistance. 
Ama kuchikata, ikutora shikata, matora kushini asa, matora shikata, makuya asa, ino kuchikata, matora kushini asa. Ah, and as we bring up that resistance, I want you to let go of all the fear you have of fully stepping into your God power. So those lifetimes previously of persecution. <gasps> oh, for it is safe for you here and now. And here is the resistance. And I'm just going to continue to remove it. <gasps> oh. Tamatoshinasa <laughs> And as I work on your third eye, I'm also going to start to work on your crown. <gasps> ah, there we go. And I'm going to move to the back of your head, to your causal chakra. <gasps> and clear that relationship center, relationship with self, soul, higher self, I am, past lives, family members, money. <gasps> Now we can expand you. Mm. Begin to feel that pulsing. You might feel a little pressure around your temples. Matishina ukushua kishima pupuasa. Ah. And the colors are beginning to move. down to your heart. Ah, there we go. Hmm. Ah. We are complete for now. Whew, how do you feel? Oh, thank you. Well, I'll say in the beginning, uh, I had tingly all uh, around my throat and all this area was tingling. 
And then mm -hmm. my this last section, I could feel my uh, crown, mm -hmm. activity at the crown. Yeah. Beautiful. Did you feel anything start to move? There was a little pressure going on right here. Not really. I didn't feel okay. much there, but I felt the crown and the tingling all here. Beautiful. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll see. I'll, I'll report back, you guys, if any, any uh, yeah. anything. Absolutely. Whoa. Okay. Oh, and I was, uh, I just want to tell all the viewers, I had been watching another uh, video of you on another show and an orb, beautiful orb passed by. So if you viewers, if anybody sees anything, let me know.